with everyone? All right. Um, let us begin with a word of silent prayer. Amen. Happy Sabbath again. All right. So, um, Kunar went over. It says, happy are ye if ye what? Do them. So, this is the, the fight against self all the time. If we do that which, which the Lord has told us. And, and he's, he also said that happiness comes at the end. Correct? All right. So, Amen. We've been indoors for a knife and joy cometh in the, in the morning. So these two points are illustrating the end. This is the end, the first trouble, this little time of peace. Then it's a, the um, second trouble, it's the end of the second trouble. So, the, so there will be happiness both at the sign, at this point, and at midway. So let's put happiness here because we'll see the happiness in both these parts, points. So, so um, Kanar went over bathing, and bathing use water, and a circumcision is, is also a what? Baptism. It's a baptism. So it's the same thing as bathing. So this is one point where we'll, we'll look at in the line of Moses. So we have the seven thunders of Moses up here, parallel with the line from the fifth day, fourth month, to midway. And then showing, and we'll look at this circumcision, with, or this bathing in which, in which, in which we need. It's very nice, this quote that he had from 3T70, paragraph 1. It says, um, if you, yeah, it's not, it's not in notes or anything, it, it was in his notes. It says, persons in health should, should on no account neglect bathing. They, they should by all means bathe as often as twice a week. All right. And I like that she used the, um, she says twice a week because this, this, this is exactly what we'll see with the circumcision. Ah, one second. <coughs> ah, amen. Yes. Last week of Christ, yes. Amen. Yes. The temple was cleansed twice. We had to go through two times of trouble to reach the end. These are the these bathings. Let me just put this, I forgot to draw this line here. So we know we've looked at this point over the weeks in Judges 9, is where the evil spirit comes. We're now the um where, where now we'll see trouble within the, in, within the earth. We have this illustrated by this 10, 10 symbol of the test, also shown from August 1st, 1840. And upon August 1st, 1840, Josiah Litch, one of the um, St. Adventist pioneers, received more light on, upon August 11th, 1840, upon the event that will soon come. So likewise, at this point, we will receive much more light upon the event that is soon coming. And, which is right here, the sign. So, it says, they should by all means bathe as often as twice a week. And we just said circumcision is likened to um, baptism, is what Paul says, I believe, in Colossians chapter 2. So, <clears throat> we'll look at the notes now. Romans 13, verses 1 to 4. says, let every soul be subject unto the higher powers, for there is no power but of God. The powers that be are ordained of God. Whosoever... There, therefore resisteth the power, resisteth the ordinance of God. And they that resist shall receive to themselves damnation. For rulers are not a terror to good works, but to evil. Wilt thou then not be afraid of the power? Do that which is good. So he's telling us to do. We must, um, so that we are happy, we have to do. So at this point, at, thi at this 10 here, the Lord will call us to do something. And 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 if we do it, we shall be happy. If not, there's damnation. It says, Do that which is good, and thou shalt have praise of the same. For he is the minister of God to thee for good. But if thou do that which is evil, be afraid. For, for he beareth not the sword in vain. For, for he is the minister of God, a revenger to execute wrath upon him that doeth evil. Okay, so it says, 
But if, but if thou do that which is evil, be afraid. So this is a point that I want to bring forth here. At this, this point where the fear, um, where the ten is, the Lord will make men fear Him, because we saw last Sabbath, the true avenger of blood, this true minister is God Himself, because the, because <clears throat> He is the true higher power. He's He's the one that actually has the sword in His hand. He bears it not in vain. The Bible says. So it says, rulers are not a terror. We'll look at what terror means. The bold portion says to, to be put in fear, alarm or fright. So, um, okay, we can continue on. Now we're going to look at circumcision. Let's go, you can skip over Proverbs. Actually, we'll read Proverbs 20 because this, is, this, this will go in line with what Canard is going to go over. It says, the fear of a king is as the roaring of a lion. Whoso provoketh him to anger sinneth against his own soul. So if you provoke the Lord to anger, you're sinning against your own soul. And the sword will come down because he bears it not in vain. <clears throat> so, now we're going to look at the circumcision. Um, one second. Okay. Okay, there we go. It says, Exodus 4, verse 19. And the Lord said unto Moses in Midian, Go. Return to Egypt, for all, for all the men are dead which sought thy life. And Moses took his wife and his sons and set them upon an ass. And he, and he returned, returned to the land of Egypt, and Moses took the rod of God in his hand. <clears throat> um, let's jump down to verse 24. We, we know these verses. We, we went over these a number of times. It says, And it came, came, Came t -t 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 and it came to pass by the way in the inn that the Lord met him and sought to kill him. So now Christ comes before Moses with this sword in his hand to, to go deal death upon Moses because he had not hearkened. He, because he, he had not done the will of the Lord. So the avenger blood came up against him to slay him because he provoked him. Um, Exodus 4 verse 25 Then Zipporah took a sharp stone And cut off the foreskin of, foreskin of her son and Cast it at his feet And said surely a bloody husband art thou to me Then Oh sorry So, so he let him go Then Then, sh then sh she said A bloody husband thou art Because of the circumcision And and the Lord said to Aaron, go into the wilderness to meet Moses. And he went and met him in the Mount of God and kissed him. So we've seen, we, you know that this whole period from, from past studies is this whole 10 that we, that we derived um, from, we look at Daniel 10 verse 1 from 5, 536 to 536. There was a work at the start of it before, before, um, before the Jews came came out of um, Babylon. And also we looked at um, 536. Oh, the ninth, the ninth to the ninth hour as well. Yes, that was the other one I wanted to bring up. The ninth to the ninth hour where before Christ died at the ninth hour, there was a work, work in which Christ was doing at the ninth hour from the beginning to the end of it. So <clears throat> what I want to bring forth here, we have the circumcision lined up right here as well, which is a sign. And, um, okay. And, but before, before that Moses is told to go, he must do a work. And what I'm going to purport is that I believe this is where this work in which he must do. He must he must do it here before 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 he can go and meet um, before he can go into the mount of God because that's what verse twenty seven says he goes he meets Aaron in the mount the mount of God so we'll look at it as we go along page of prophets two fifty five paragraph five can I have a reader for that quote please. Him in a threatening manner as if he would immediately destroy him. 
nor explanation was given. But Moses remembered that he had disregarded one of the God, one of God's requirements. Yielding to the persuasion of his wife, he had neglected to perform the rite of circumcision <coughs> on their youngest son. He had failed to comply with the condition by which his child should be entitled to the blessings of the covenant of the of God's covenant with Israel, and such a neglect on the part of their chosen leader could not but lessen the force <coughs> of the divine precept upon the people. Zipporah, fearing that her husband would be slain, performed the rite herself, and the angel then permitted Moses to pursue his journey. In his mission to Pharaoh, Moses was to be placed in a position of great peril. His life could be preserved only through the protection of holy angels. But while living in neglect of a known duty, he would not be secure, for he could not be shielded by the angels of God. Amen. So, Moses here was in open sin. And we know that we cannot come... We've looked at studies previously. It's a little time of peace. It's the foot washing. And you cannot partake in the foot washing if you have what? Open sin. So Moses here, as she says, um, look for it very quickly. He says, but while living in, in neglect of a known duty. So Moses here had to come and repent before he can go forward into the Mount of God. So before, before, before we can reach this part, this little time of peace, we have to come up here and we have to put aside everything. This point is a last call before the end comes. Because when the end comes, if you don't, if you're not clean and washed, there's nothing else that the Lord can do for you. The mouth of God is also a symbol of heaven. Amen, yes. Moses had to um, repent because uh, he, Moses had to repent for his life on the rock before he was able to be resurrected and brought into heaven as well. Amen, brought into the Mount of God. Yes. Amen. Yes. And over the body of Moses. Mm -hmm. So Moses, not Moses, Satan had that over him, but Ellen White says that Satan did not know that he had previously repented. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Moses was his watchman, and we all here are watchmen because the Lord is showing these things onto us, showing, showing what will take place here and here before it takes place. So this death angel comes, but this death angel is only pointing to the end. So Moses is seeing the end of Pharaoh and himself if he does not repent. Amen. It came to kill his firstborn. And the same death angel came back to go and kill Pharaoh's firstborn. So Moses was seeing the end. So we're going to come up here and we're going to see the end and we will fear. This point here is to instill the fear of God into our hearts fully. Amen. Because it says Moses received a startling and terrible warning of the Lord's displeasure. He's he the he is in terror of the higher power. He's truly fearing the higher power, which is is God. There's no higher power but him. That's why he's called the most high. <clears throat> so he comes here at this 10 to instill this fear, and we must partake in this work of circumcision. We have to be bathed. We have to take this bath once, then we're gonna take another bath right here at the sign. We're gonna be submerged in, in into the water so that we might be clean. Because it's the same thing with the, the, 100, the, the 144,000. They are sealed, but the seven last plagues is another bath for them. So that, so that they must be washed again. Because, amen. So, and, and, they're, and, yeah, and they have another seal. So it's this double seal in some sense upon them. Because their work is in the most holy place. And in the most holy place, you have to be as near to Christ as possible. That's why Satan's destruction is going to be really bad. Because he was as near to Christ as possible. Because he was second in charge in all of heaven. He gave it up. So, okay. Um, all right, that's another thing we have to keep in mind. This is, I, I didn't underline this point, but I should have. This is fearful because we, this point here is telling us to go and search ourselves. Because it says no explanation was given. He just comes here, sends light, and he does not explain. You got to search yourself and find out. Where you have disregarded God's word. We have to put away everything. That is the fearful thing where the Lord, the Lord is not, not speaking to you about it. The angel just came there and stood, stood before Moses. Moses knew, I am disregarding a, a known duty. I have to put it away. Ah, uh, yes, amen. Mm-hmm. 
Amen. Because, because he already told you. That's why it comes here. Why, why, do, how come you don't have on the, the, um, the, the, the wedding garment? You must have on the wedding garment. I told you to put it on. You still came here without it on. Why? And stand there speechless. Okay. So, it says the angel appeared to him in a threatening manner as if he would immediately destroy him. No explanation was given, but Moses remembered that he had disregarded one of God's requirements, yielding to the persuasion of his wife, yielding to the persuasion of the woman. And we went over this 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 woman in our own hearts. <clears throat> and you and we can't yield to this to these impressions, feelings, thoughts that is from Satan. We cannot we cannot um yield onto these things. It is it's a it's it's truly a fight. Next paragraph says, in the time of trouble, just before, j just before the coming of Christ, the righteous will be preserved through the ministration of heavenly angels. But there will be no security for the transgressor of God's law. Angels cannot then protect those who are disregarding one of the divine precepts. So we know at the sign, at this point, the Lord will give us a view of when the four winds are loose. It won't be loose in its fullest sense when the close of probation, but he'll give us a view of it. And... If we're not, if we're not protected by these angels, anything can come upon us. The, the plagues, death, famine, whatever can come upon us because now we are in Satan's hand. Because this is what um, Sunan and Kanar went over last Sabbath, where Judas went out and now, he, and now Satan possessed him. Satan can take him and goes to and fro wherever he wants because cause Judas was now Satan's rightful property at that point. He can do with his property whatsoever he will okay so so what i'm bringing forth here is that at this point the lord will call us to circumcise this is what 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 we have to do he's given us a view of this very time just shortly before okay um page of prophets 279 paragraph 3 and i bring this point up to go back to what Zipporah said about Moses. It says, surely thou art a bloody husband. So he had this blood upon him. Therefore, the angel could not come upon him. Like what, this is what happened at Passover in the time of Moses as well. This whole paragraph is talking about <clears throat> the Passover, but we just read the, the bold portion. It says, the sign of blood, the sign of a savior's protection, what was on their doors and the destroyer entered not. So this is what, Moses ha had upon them upon himself when he when he um when his wife partook of the of the yes amen but that's another word I want to use but so be it amen he had, he had the seal amen he had, he had the seal upon him because all of this was just showing about the firstborn of Pharaoh who will fall but because he came the angel Christ came to go destroy Moses and his and his firstborn for not. For not, for not doing this, not following the express commands of the Lord. So, all right. Genesis 17, <clears throat> verse 14. And the uncircumcised man-child, <clears throat> whose flesh of his foreskin is not circumcised, that soul shall be cut off from his people. He hath broken my covenant. So if you do not partake in this work, we shall be cut off. So happy ye are if you do them. But you do not do them. This is what this is what what will happen. You be cut off from heaven. Amen. Without the shedding of blood, there's no remission of sin. So, what I'm seeing here is that the Lord wants to bring us into a nearer connection with Him. He's He's bringing us into to a marriage with Him. But and this this ten here is also a time for repentance. <clears throat> Next paragraph, thirteen Amar, three three four point um, two. I stated that I was a stockholder and. And I, and, and I c could not let the, amen, pass that, 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 th that there was to be, excuse me, that there was, that there was to be special light for God's people as they neared the closing scenes of this earth's his history. Another angel was to come from heaven with a message and the whole earth was to be lightened with his glory. It would be impossible for us to, it would be impossible for us to state just how this additional light would come. And I'm saying that this point is this additional light. 
when this additional light comes, the the a, amen, it will come unexpectedly. We have to we have to build up a habit of not fighting against God's word, whomever or wherever it comes from. It says Mm-hmm. Amen. It says, it will be impossible for us to state just how this additional light would come. It might come in a very unexpected manner, in a way, in a way that will not agree with the ideas that many have conceived. So when this, when this time comes, the Lord is really going to try to he will stir up every thought in which we have, and he stirs it up so that all the, the, the foolishness might be sifted out and the, and the true gold might stay, stay in the pan. It said it might come in a, very, in a very unexpected manner in a way that would not agree with the ideas that, that many have conceived. It is not at all unlikely or contrary to the worry, ways and works of God to send light to his people in unexpected ways. Amen. Yes. Mm -hmm. to, to bow down and wash the feet. Amen. 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 So, the, the, when this light comes, we cannot rise up. Peter is there to show us what not to do. Even though he, he then received it, and at the end, we still, we still don't have to rise up against it at all. So Peter's there to show us, all right, this light came. It's just the first thing we should do is go and pray. Search, 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 and pray, pray, pray. We must, must be spiritual, violent people, constant in prayer. Next, next verses, De Deuteronomy 10, 12. And now, Israel, what doth, doth the Lord thy God require of thee but to fear the Lord thy God? to walk in all his ways and to love him and to serve the Lord thy God with all thy heart and with all thy soul. Circumcise therefore the foreskin of, of your heart and be no more stiff-necked for the Lord your God is, a, is God of gods and Lord of lords, a great God, a mighty and a terrible, which, which regardeth not persons nor taketh reward. So to fear God is also, um, to, circumcision is connected with the fear of God. So he comes up here, and he, he comes here to instill fear within our hearts, but not, not the fear of the wicked, because the fear, because she has a quote, it says, we are not, not to fear the fear of, of the wicked, that is to reverence what they reverence. So we are to reverence God. This fear is to bring, bring a true reverence, true um, worship to God, because the Bible tells us we, we, we must be spiritual worshipers. And worship him in spirit and in truth, because at, at this moment we um actually no, I won't say that. Anyways, continue on. Um Second Chronicles nineteen seven. Wherefore now now let now let the fear fear of the Lord be upon you. Take heed and what? Do it. So and this doing will bring happiness. Because if Moses did not did not do it, he would have been slain, and his son would have, his son would have been slain right before his eyes, just as what happened with Zedekiah. Thing that happened with Pharaoh as well would have been slain right before his eyes, and his last thought of Moses would be unhappiness. Then he would, would have been slain as well. Deuteronomy thirty verse six, and the Lord thy God will circumcise thine heart and the heart of thy seed to love. Love the Lord thy God with all thine heart and with all thy soul that thou mayest live. And the Lord thy God will put all these curses upon thine enemies and on them that hate thee, which persecuted thee. This verse goes directly with what was going, what Swin and Kunar was going over last Sabbath. All of the demons from Peter, James, John, Matthew, Luke, all of their demons came off of them and went directly upon Judas because Satan fully um, um, possessed him because it says and the Lord thy God will put all these curses up um, all these curses upon thine enemies so if we're faithful all of our evils in which in which we have struggled with and fought against and then and then 
And then when we come to this point, we finally win against all those evils. Those evils will flee from us because Christ is not within our hearts. Because we have now lived up to the light, um, the light for for that that time. But all those curses and evils that that are that were within our hearts, those demons must must find another host, and it goes and it goes to whoever rejected that additional light that God has sent. Amen. Yes. Amen. And it troubles him, amen, for a thousand years and him alone. He's just there with all your, your thoughts in which you've been fighting with, night and day, day and night, whatever it may be. All these things are now taken from you. This is, this is what Genesis 22 shows with um, Abraham and Isaac. The, 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 there's a ransom, this ram, ram the thicket. All those, all those evils are now put, on, put upon this ram. It's all typifying Satan, the, his end. And the Lord will give us a view of Satan's end at this point. It's really nice where, where now the Lord will um, give us life because it says that thou mayest live. And um, you, you don't really have a, per, a, a very well life if you're in bondage. Jeremiah 4.4 4, Circumcise yourselves to the Lord and take away the foreskins of your heart, ye men of Judah and inhabitants of Jerusalem. Lest my fury come forth like fire and burn that none none can quench it because because of the evil of your doings so all these points we already know th th these are all um all things we have went went over a number of times before but it's just putting it in this in, in this time for what what we'll, we'll soon meet <clears throat> so now we look at joshua 5 when they they, they must be circumcised a second time it's the second bath now in which in which you must receive so this this work of circumcision right here, basically putting away all your thoughts and your, your ways and your doings. Um, can someone read verse 1 and 2, please? <clears throat> Okay, pause. So now the fear of the Lord is in their hearts now, but now they are they're not fearing um, the fear in which in which. Yeah, yeah, amen. They are fearing him because because of all the judgments, because um, if you go to, I think, yeah, go back to Judges, not Judges, sorry, Joshua 4 and 3 and 2 and whatnot. This is the fallen of um, fallen of all these kings and so forth previous and also in Deuteronomy if you go back. But anyways, go ahead. And at that time the Lord said unto Joshua, Make ye sharp knives and circumcise again the children of Israel the second time. Amen. So now so now he so now he comes here and circumcises the children a second time. Yes. It's a painful it's a it's a painful work. Painful. Yes. Um but I also think these the um Yeah. It's gonna be a, a it's also vulnerable because to be when you circumcise you're really exposed, right? Ah, you really yes. need to fight that. Like that thought, yes. Like, like, um, Levi. Mm -hmm. Levi did that to the Oh yeah, the men of Shechem. Yeah, the Shechemites. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yes, you can't fight. You can't run. You, you can't. Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. Strong. Amen. Once you hold on to Christ, we are now at, at, at our height at that point. We're at the strongest point. But at this same point, the, the, the horn, when it's at its height, is what? Broken. It's broken. So, so if you're on the side of Satan, when you're at your height, this is the weakest. Because once you're at your height, you're going to fall. And that fall is going to be a hard and fall, um, 
far fall. Excuse me. So, go ahead. Mm-hmm. Then you fall in that trap because you know, I mean, you know, you were saying this this time is your secret time with God. Yes, and Amen. this is your high place. Mm-hmm. This is where Satan comes. But for those who haven't their secret time with the with the mm-hmm. strange woman, she, it says her ways lead to lead to hell. Death. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Okay. Oh yes. Oh yeah. That was exactly then because he went in the tent. At that same time, and then they were both both thrust through through their um through their stomachs, I believe, yeah, through the belly. So let me just see if there's anything else I want to take from these other verses. Okay. Um, okay. Can someone read verse six and s- six and seven? Go ahead. So the children of Israel walked 40 years in the wilderness until all the people that were men of war which came out of Egypt were consumed because they obeyed not the voice of the Lord and to whom the Lord swore that he would not show them the land which the Lord swore unto their fathers that he would give us a land that floweth with milk and honey. And their children whom he raised up on their stead him Joshua circumcised. For they were uncircumcised because they had not circumcised them by the way. Okay, so we know the sign here, you just said, is the little town peace, and many souls will, will come in. And when they come in, they have not been, been what? Baptized. They have not been circumcised. Therefore, when they come in, they must also be circumcised. Amen. But now verse 9, it says, so now when this... I'll just put second time next to circumcision here. As it says in Joshua 5. It's the second time when you circumcise. Verse 9 says, And the Lord said unto Joshua, This day have I rolled away the reproach of Egypt from off you. Wherefore, the name of the place is called Gilgal unto this day. So you only have the reproach ro- rolled away when you go through both of them. You must, you must receive both baths. You must bathe twice. It's what I was going over. You have to be circumcised twice so that this reproach is rolled away. Captivity turned. Amen. It's the captivity being turned. Amen. Gilgal. So this is the beginning of it. So this is one. This is the end of it. This is the second one. And the captivity is turned turned away. It's the, the, the reproach of Egypt is off you. And I think it's in Leviticus 26 or Deuteronomy 28. It says that says that if you hearken unto my voice, that I will put none of the plagues, no, of Egypt's, yeah, of, of the Egyptians upon you. Amen. So now, so now the reproach of Egypt is off of you. So now at this point, you will receive none of those diseases or troubles or plagues which Egypt received, which goes back to what we said. It says, and I'll put all these curses upon your enemies. Amen. Happy are ye if you do them. This true happiness comes from a conscious thought of doing right. That is what actually happiness comes from. Amen. That that is really what happiness really comes from. And I know for myself, I, I'm the happiest when the Lord shows me things. Like when I start to understand things more, it's the hap- that's the happiest point. It's the highlight highlight of your day. But however, the 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 test comes at that same point because now you have to walk in that. Because Satan comes and he wants to tell you, no, no, not this. Because this is what happened with, with Elijah on the mount. He called down fire. He, um, it, no, 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 no. He, he called down fire and the uh, men, men were slain and all these things. But then the woman comes. And, yeah, amen. He was on the highest point. He was on the mount. And the mountain, um, says what it says, is a symbol of spiritual elevation. He was on the mount at the highest point. And then comes Jezebel. This is what Satan always does. It's the same thing repeated in everyday life. And at all these wear marks, you're going to see the same thing being repeated. When you're at your height, Satan's going to try to bring you down. Okay. Next paragraph. Um, a short distance from Jordan, the Hebrews made their first encampment in Canaan. 
Here Joshua circumcised the children of Israel. Oh, also Gilgal, I didn't read it, means wheel or a whirlwind. So at the sign, amen, it's this whirlwind. Wait, Gali is also, yes, I forgot about that, yes. Because from Gilgal, I forgot about that, yes. Amen. It says, <clears throat> here Joshua circumcised the children of Israel. Hmm. Think about that thought you just said. And the children of Israel encamped in Gilgal and kept the Passover. The suspension of the right, actually we can jump down to the bold. Now, however, the years of rejection were ended. And she's also um, connected with this, the Passover in Joshua, I think. The rest of Joshua 5 and 6. It says, Now, however, the years of rejection were ended. Once more, God acknowledged Israel as his people, and the sign of the covenant was restored. The rite of circumcision, the rite of circumcision was, performed, was performed upon all the people who, who had been born in the wilderness. And the Lord declared to Joshua, This day have I rolled away the reproach of Egypt from off you, and, and in allusion to this place, um, uh, uh, of their encampment was called Gilgal, or rolling away, or rolling off. Heathen nations had had reproach, reproach the heathen nations had reproached the Lord and His people because the Hebrews had failed to take possession of Canaan, as they expected soon after leaving Egypt. Go ahead. Ah, amen. Yes, the stone is rolled away now, resurrected. Amen. Amen. In the fire. Amen. Amen. Yes, he is caught in the thicket. And now all the curses that were upon upon um Lazarus because Lazarus yeah is now now upon him. Go ahead. <coughs> mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. And every time water, time water. Ah, nice. Amen. Amen. <coughs> All right. Okay, so continue with this quote. We can see that the heathens reproached, reproached Israel, and we can see some of this even now, right here, because now since since who won? Biden won. They're saying, oh, there's false prophets and all these things. But, amen. God is going to roll that away. And all their, all their scoffing mouths must be shut. This, I always have this ver verse in my mind. It sounds harsh, but, but this, is, this is what they, the, the wicked want. David says, break their teeth in their mouths, O Lord. All their words will, will fall upon them. And their teeth will... will and, and their mouth, mouth will no, no longer speak all these reproachful things unto God and upon his people. Next. Go ahead. Oh, amen. It's the swine going off into the sea. And, that, and, and, and now they are dashed upon a stone. Amen. All right. It says, their enemies had triumphed because Israel had wandered so long in the wilderness they had mockingly declared that the God of the Hebrews was not able to bring them into the promised land. The Lord had now signally manifested his power and favor in opening the Jordan before his people, and their enemies could no longer reproach them. It's rolled away. Go ahead. Amen. <clears throat> Amen. Roll it away. Amen. It's it, the, well, this is the Lord. What I can't explain what the Lord wants to do in words. I can only say it, it's, it's just a wonderful thing. That's the, that's the most I can say about it. It's going to be a it's going to be beautiful in which the what God really wants to show us, because we'll, we'll start seeing things from his word in which we have never saw before. And in it just it's going to be just. Beautiful. That's 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 as much I can really say about it. Go ahead. Yeah. Love is to him for walking in light. 
Amen. Amen. That he was, he was basically gone for a while. Mm-hmm. And then the Lord says, all right, now is the time. Go tell Ahab do this. So Elijah had to walk in the light. As a king. And, 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 and so that when he came to Mount Carmel, now he, he had to come to him and say, say Lord, um, show his people that I am your prophet. Mm-hmm. So that's why we can explain it. Elijah could, I, I mean, Elijah was just following. Mm-hmm. You know, and when the fire came down, for him and for everyone else, it, 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 it inspires faith. Amen. So. Amen. So, um, oh yeah, and we've seen some of these things last year with the symbols in which the Lord shows us that Israel can show Islam, where, where Israel can show also show black people that the, the Lord showed us things from his word based upon exactly what is happening right before our eyes. And the Lord will do that again, but he's going to do even more. We're going to see things. It's, it's we're going to see things so clearly wherein the thing we can speak about with such a surety that no man can can gainsay. We're going to see it so clearly as if it is happening right before us. The Lord really wants to make us true prophets. Go ahead, Kamar. Mm-hmm. Israel is, is God's holy angels. And that Amen. Same destruction they did will be the Amen. evil angels, Israel, when, when, when he permits. Amen. What you see Israel do is only showing you what Israel is going to do. Amen. Amen. So it's, it's going to be very nice, but we, we can't get there without, without a test. We have to endure in this, in this, final, this final test before, before we are... Um, before the reproach is rolled away. How much time do I have? Ooh. Okay. So look under the head and compass on every side. Okay. It says Matthew ten, verse twenty eight, and fear not them which kill kill the body, but not but but are not able to kill the soul. But rather fear him which is able to destroy both soul and body in hell. This is what the Lord wants to instill in within our minds. Continuing on, we're going to look at Lot, story which we looked at a number of times. It says, he had hoped to conceal his, as you can, someone read this quote up to the, the bold, the end of the bold. He had hoped to conceal his intention from the idlers at the gate by bringing the strangers to his home by a circuitous route. But their hesitation and delay and his persistent urging caused them to be observed. And before they had retired for the night, a lawless crowd gathered about the house. It was an immense company, youth and aged men alike, inflamed by the violent passion. All right. So, next paragraph. So someone read. Just to see what. Oh, yes. Amen. Yes. Flames. Yeah. Amen. Come to the house, the harder the house gets. Amen. Yes. Can someone read? Yes, the three bolds, please. Yeah. You can start with the first sentence of the paragraph. Yeah. Okay. Knowing that it provoked the violence, they could easily break into to his house. Lot went out to try the, the effect of persuasion upon them. I pray you, brother, he, brethren, he said, do not so wickedly, using the term brethren in the sense of neighbors and hoping to conciliate them and make them ashamed of their vile purposes but his words were like oil upon the flame okay stop there so lot comes here and, and i'm thinking this is the, this point here lot comes here and tries to conciliate them as much as, pro, as much as possible before their end comes um okay yes hey amen he comes here with this last message this last warning before the door is shut. Read um read the next bowl, please. The events that follow reveal the character of the guests. Ah, sorry. I'm so sorry. Go back two sentences up. They they rushed upon him. I should have bolded it. They rushed upon him and would have torn him in pieces had he not been rescued by the angel of God. The heavenly messengers put forth their hand and pulled Lot into the house to them and shut the door. 
joy. The events that followed revealed the character of the guests he had entertained. They smote the men that were at the door of the house with blindness, both small and great, so that they were wor- they wearied themselves to find the door. Had they not been visited with double blindness, being given up to hardness of heart, the stroke of God upon them would have caused them to fear and to desist, desist from their evil work. All right. So, last paragraph says, a lawless crowd gathered about the house. So, this last point, this 10 here, um, house is compassed, compassed on every side. Amen. Amen. It's atheism. When this evil spirit comes upon upon the men of Shechem and upon the Bimlech, it will be lawlessness. Amen. This house is now compassed. So those those who receive see this light here, they shall be compassed with many troubles. It's, and same thing with um with the vision that was Sister White's dream, where her house was. House was compassed as well. It's going to be compassed with many, um, many troubles because now the Lord trying to bring us to the height of spiritual um, elevation, trying to bring us to the mount. So, be, so Satan will try to hinder us at, at, at all points so that we, we won't reach the, the height of the mount. Um, okay, yes. And right here, there was smoke with blindness. The door was shut. They smoke with blindness. These, this lawless crowd is sh- double blindness. Yes, amen. You're, you're right. This lawless crowd here is showing those who reject the light. And if they, this light now becomes darkness unto them. Amen. Uh, go ahead. Out of, uh, amen. Amen. So now, based on what you're saying, this this law, the, these lawless men. We look up what lawless means. Eight twenty eight means not subject to law, unrestrained by law, as a lawless tyrant, lawless men, contrary to law, illegal, unauthorized. The only thing that comes to mind is that there would be laws put in place then, or something done in the state power wherein they are going against the constitution because that because that's how biden came up he came up to um he, he came up by disregarding the constitution so his whole reign is about this disregard of the constitution and at this very time these laws as well will compass us as well along with all all the slew of other things that satan has in his arsenal Mm-hmm. Lawless. Okay. Hmm. I will look into that. Okay. Um, that last night was marked by no greater sins than many others before it, but mercy so long slighted had at last ceased its pleading. The inhabitants of Sodom had passed the limits of divine forbearance, the hidden boundary between God's patience and his wrath. The fires of his vengeance were, were about to be kindled in the veil of Siddam. So, the house is compassed. It's this last, last warning. And then, if you reject it, this light now come, becomes unto you darkness. Now, you have this double blindness placed upon you with this shut door. When, where, where now the, the wicked is shut out and the wise is shut in with Christ. Now, the venture of blood can um, have his way with you because you're not in the refuge city anymore. Or you're not in the refuge city, period. Um, next paragraph. The angels revealed to Lot the object of their mission. 
We will destroy this place because the cry of them is waxing great before the face of the Lord. And the Lord hath sent us to destroy it. The strangers whom Lot had endeavored to protect now promised to protect him and to save also all the members of his family who would flee with him from the wicked city. And now this is when Lot goes to his, his, his family members. Next bold. They could see no evidence of danger. Everything was just as it had been. Even amidst all the wickedness, they still won't see any, anything wrong with the city life. And we've, we've heard some of these same sentiments previous. But I'm going to take from here, at this point, it's another revelation of Christ. Because the angels revealed unto Lot um, their, their true mission. All right, coming down to a close. Looking at this last story with Elisha. It says, and when, and when the servant of the man of God was risen early and gone forth, behold, and host come past the city, both with horses and chariots. So I'm just using this story to show to illustrate the same compassing at at the start, start of the ten. This this the trouble in which Satan will plunge us into, where the Lord will allow Satan to plunge us in, into to test the true colors of our faith. It says, and gone forth. Behold, and host come past the city, both with horses and chariots. And his servant said, said unto him, Alas, my Lord, how shall, shall we do? He answered, Fear not. Elisha had the fear of God in his heart. He did not fear a man. And he said, Fear not, for they that be with us are more, more than they that, that we be. That be with them. And Elisha prayed and said, Lord, I pray thee, open his eyes that, that he may see. And the Lord... And, and, and the Lord oh, 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 opened the eyes of the young man, and he saw, and behold, the mountain was full of horses and chariots of fire round about Elisha. And when they came down to him, Elisha prayed unto the Lord and said, Smite this people, I pray thee, with what? Blindness. He smote them with, with blindness according to the word of Elisha. So the events that take place here are only brought forth by um, let me just say what it says. According to the word of the little praying company, because God has now inspired us, put the, these words within our mouths to go and say the same things. And therefore, once it's said, it will happen. And then these, the, this were the Syrians at this time, the Syrians that compassed Elisha. So now the Syrians are now smitten with blindness. They are, they are symbolic of also the men, um, the men who reject the light of the Lord from the highest in the state power all the way down. Whoever, whoever persists in this evil work. <clears throat> okay, Psalms 34, verse 7. The angel of the Lord encampeth around about them that fear him and delivereth them. So this is why the Lord wants us to fear him here, so that he, so that he can keep us safe when, when the four winds are loosed. Amen, yes. It's the very same thing. Amen. Judgment has come. Give. Amen. Amen. Because the blindness here just only pointed to the fire with Sodom. That does want to fall. Yeah, fall upon Sodom. Likewise, when the death angel came here for Moses, it was only pointing down to the destruction that's, um, that was going to fall upon Egypt. So even though this is the end, but it's the end of the first trouble, everything here is also pointing forward because God is always telling us onward and upward. It was to go forward. Psalms 91, 11, For he shall give his angels charge over thee to keep thee in all thy ways. So this, this only happens when we fear God. Um. So, to read the last bold, last two bolds, it says, Between the servant of God and the host of armored foe men was, in, was an encircling band of heavenly angels. They had come down in mighty power, not to destroy, not to exact homage, but to encamp round about, round about and minister to the Lord's weak and helpless ones. So it shows that when you're weak, this is your highest, just as Kanar was saying previously. When the, excuse me, what? When, when the people of God are brought into straight places and, and, and apparently there is no escape for them, the Lord alone must be their dependence. 
Amen. We have hold from above. This is the straight places. When your houses come past upon every side, is now when the Lord will. Um, it's a specific word she uses. Ah, uh, this is where the Lord, Lord, will now rise up and now show forth Himself that, that He is God. Because there is no way for man to actually get out, because your houses come past on on every side. The only way for you to get out is if God provides this way. So. I pray this was a blessing in that we we'll just see that this, this, this time that, that we're coming to here is, is really to call us on to repentance, to search our heart just as Moses did, and to see if we're breaking any known, any explicit known duty in which the Lord has shown us. And, and, we, and we must keep in mind that we, we must not rise up against any additional light that comes because we do not know what way will come. And it is not contrary to the work and ways of God to send it in a... Um, in an unexpected manner. With that being said, shall we close with a word of prayer? <clears throat> Heavenly Father, Lord, we thank you for all that you have shown. Father, please help us to, to search self and to see if in it, um, see, see if, if, if we have erred, O oh Lord, help us to, uh, um, Forsake all these things that cast down self and sin so that so that you might work in each each heart here, O Lord. Please, Father, help us to receive, receive the light receive, receive the light from on high that that will help us to be cleansed from sin and and sin and self, O oh Lord. And we ask these things in Christ's name we pray. Amen.